they said something about like not Okay, on to Professor Bernard Richards. This is a Chinese restaurant where we had dinner. I'm going to show, show a video I took at the Science Museum, which is the video is bad, but the audio is the important thing, where he talks about working with churn. Uh, Professor Richards did some amazing stuff himself. First co-author of a monograph on having a contraceptive pill. First database of infectious diseases. This guy was pretty impressive. He actually, if you've used a camera with a zoom lens, he wrote functions on how to calculate optical systems so that zoom lenses would work. Pretty amazing guy. My name is Bernard Richards. I had the honor of being able to work with Alan Turing on one of his brilliant ideas, namely his theory of morphogenesis. In 1953, Turing published his famous paper entitled The Chemical Basis of Morphogenesis. There he showed that the growth patterns in plants and animals were controlled in what they had to obey his newfound equations of growth, his equations of morphogenesis. He had used his own equations to explain the black and white pattern of dappling of cows. I worked with Turing from September 1953 until his unexpected death on Monday the 7th of June 1954. My role was to take his equations of morphogenesis and seek an exact solution the case of spherical organisms. I saw Turing late in the week before he died. I was scheduled to see him again the following Monday, the 7th, but that was the day he died. I wanted to show him the progress that I had made in my work. Subsequently, I completed the solution of his differential equation for a spherical organism and using the computer I produced a set of shapes. These showed a sphere with spikes protruding at defined points. Then I discovered that the marine species radial area were just such creatures and that my solution defined exactly where their spikes should grow. To me, this was a full vindication of Turing's theory of morphogenesis. Turing struck me as a genius. He was on a higher plane. As I got to know more about his academic work, I became amazed. But of course, his co-breaking work at Bletchley was still under wraps, and we knew nothing of that. The more I got to know him, the more I realized how fortunate I was. He was very shy, but underneath he was a kind and caring man. I was his only researcher. I got on well with him because I was making progress and I could understand his way of thinking. We were a good team. Today, most people will remember him for his code breaking of Bletchley Park. But I would like to keep his memory alive on his morphogenesis also. Okay, so a, complete, a completely different science of morphogenesis that began with his work. Here are some photos I took again at the Science Museum where they were talking about his morphogenesis work. Here's a picture of uh, patterns of growth in daisies where he was able to predict what they would do. Up at the top, there's Bernard Richard's picture of what his functions, derivatives said, would happen. Here's a picture of radiolaria. He also, I took a picture, he actually has his own published copy of Alan Turing's pamphlets on morphogenesis that published later on. Okay, uh, last. Um, so Alan Turing was a homosexual. 
and he was oblivious to real life, normal life, um, and, and was kind of famous for that wherever he lived. When he was at his public school, he was just known as this weird kid, but everybody put up with him. He was this brilliant genius, um, and so, and he was very well-meaning, very gentle. He went to Cambridge, same thing. He went to Bletchley Park, same thing. Everyone knew that the success of what was going on at Bletchley Park depended on Turing, and really, at the time, what, basically remember, Bletchley Park was 8,000 people, none of whom could talk about their work. But the average age at Bletchley Park was 20 years old. So they had dances, there, were, there was a lot going on there, and, and all the people that you talked to who were there just say, anything goes. It, we had a blast, like we worked really hard, but we had a blast. And so here was this guy, homosexual, not a big deal. But then he got to um, Manchester, and he actually was in a homosexual relationship with a person who turned out to actually be a thief. And the guy stole some top stuff from Turing's house. And Turing called up the police and called them to his house and said, this guy, I think, has stolen things from my house. And the police said, why was he here? And Turing pretty much said, well, we were having a relationship. And the police stopped investigating the thief and started investigating Turing. So he had a choice of going to jail or uh, taking this hormone treatment that they thought at the time would cure homosexuality. He blew up in terms of weight. He grew breasts. He was just miserable. They were just about to begin talking about what the people had done at Bletchley Park, but he lost his security clearance because he'd been charged for being a homosexual. He wasn't allowed to leave the country, etc. And so a couple of years after this happened, Alan Turing, his this is his favorite movie, was Sleeping Beauty. He died of arsenic, poisoning uh, from eating an apple. And so a lot of people think that was just for him kind of a poetic way to go out. Because of this and the year of Alan Turing, a lot of people pushed for um, getting a pardon, essentially, and, and it was kind of weird. Uh, for a while, the government said, you can't actually pardon someone. All we can do is apologize. So in 2009, the prime minister uh, did a public apology. Um, but 2013, actually, the queen is allowed to pardon people. And so Queen Elizabeth issued an official pardon um, so that, uh, to get over that. Uh, just, this is kind of cool. This is going to Cambridge, uh, to King's College, the archives. Um, this is just walkway, like you would imagine from the, from the University Library, from the King's movies. College. This is just a quick video of Mary and I walking to the King's, here we are in the courtyard of King's I'm College. Okay, inside King's College, about to go to the archives. walking off, and they're uh, in front of the library. Okay, here's a, a, one of my favorite photos of, of Turing when he's much younger. You hardly see this photo at all. And I thought, uh, as a last thing, I'll just show you the heavily Hollywoodized trailer to the movie The Imitation Game, and then we'll be done. This wolf, it's not what he is. You speak a word of what I'm about to show you. You will be executed for high treason. Who are you? Alan Turing, one of the best mathematicians in the world. Welcome to Enigma. It's the greatest encryption device in history. The Germans use it for all major communications. Which isn't true. 159 million, million, million possible settings. It's unbreakable. Let me try, and we'll know for sure. Turing, do you know how many have died because of Enigma? Three. While we've been having this conversation. Churchill put Alan in charge. Keith and Charles were fine. Popular at school, boy. I short on staff. We get more staff. You have six minutes to complete the task. It's not even possible. It takes me eight. Five minutes and 34 seconds. You said to do it in under six. What is it that we really She's based actually on a real person, Alan, and this woman actually were engaged. 
put off for six months while they were collecting proteins. And then they both decided, oh, maybe that's a bad idea. What if only a machine can defeat another machine? Have you decrypted a single German message? My machine did. Will work sooner or later. You will make a mistake. What if I don't fancy Joan in that way? It's illegal. They're looking for any excuse to put you away. You've got more secrets than the best. Am I a criminal? Am I a war hero? You don't get to decide who lives and who dies. No one else can. You <laughs> never understand the importance of what I am creating here. It is the people who no one imagines anything of who do the things that no one can imagine. Okay, so you get the idea. And so now you've heard what really was there, you'll be able to watch that and sort of realize what's Hollywood and what isn't. So, thank you very much.